the still inside the storm, the promise of the shore. Well, I trust the power of your word, enough to seek your kingdom first. Beyond the barren place, beyond the ocean waves. When I walk through the waters, I won't be overcome. When I go through the rivers, I will not be drowned. My God will make a way, so I am not afraid. You keep the promises you made. There isn't one that is delayed. So I will not lose heart. Here I will lift my arms. Well, let's start to sing into the night. My praise will call the sun to rise. Declare. I won't be overcome when I go through the rivers. Well, I will not be drowned. My God will make a way, so I am not afraid. When I am in the fire, I will not feel the flames. I'll stand before the giant, declaring victory. My God will make a way. So I am not afraid Who be for me, behind me Always beside me No shadow, no valley Where you won't find me No, I am not afraid Who be for me, behind me Always beside me No shadow, no valley where you won't find me, you know I am not afraid. No, I am not afraid. When I walk through the waters, I won't be overcome. When I go through the rivers, well, I will not be drowned. My God will make a way. I'll stand before the giant, declaring victory. My God will make a way, so I am not afraid. When I walk, when I walk through the waters, I won't be overcome. When I go through the rivers, well, I will not be drowned. My God will make a way, so I. fire. I will not feel the flames. I'll stand before the giant, declaring victory. Oh, my God will make a way, so I am not afraid. My God will make a way, so I am not afraid. No, I am not afraid. No, When I go through the rivers, I will not be drowned. My God will make a way, so I am not afraid. When I am in the fire, I will not feel the flame. I'll stand before the giant, declaring victory. My God will make a way. So I am not afraid when I walk through.
through the waters I won't be overcome when I go through the rivers I will not be drowned my God will make a way so I am not afraid when I am in the fire I will not feel the flames I'll stand before the giant declaring victory my God will make a way so I am not afraid before me before me behind me always beside me no shadow no valley where you won't find me no I am not afraid well, before me behind me always beside me no shadow no valley where you No, I am not afraid. When I walk through the waters, I won't be overcome. When I go through the rivers, I will not be drowned. My God will make a way. So I am not afraid when I am in the fire. Will not feel the flames. I'll stand before the giant, declaring victory. My God will make a way, so I am not afraid. My God will make a way, so I am not into the room everything changes and darkness starts to tremble at the light that you bring when you walk into the room every heart starts burning and nothing matters more than just to sit here at your feet and worship you We worship you when you walk in. When you walk into the room, everything changes. And darkness starts to tremble at the light that you bring. And when you walk into the room, every heart starts burning. Nothing matters more than just to sit here at your feet and worship you. We worship you. We love you and we'll never stop. We can't live without you. Jesus, we love you. We can't get enough. Lord, this is for you. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. When you walk into the room, the sickness starts to vanish every hopeless situation ceases to exist and when you walk into the room the dead began to rise because there is resurrection life and all you do we love you and we'll never stop we can't live without you, oh, Jesus, we love you, we can't 
can't get enough. Well, all this is for you, Jesus. We love you, and we'll never stop. We can't live without you, oh Jesus. We love you. We can't get enough. Oh, all this is for you, oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Come and consume God, all we are. We give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. We'll come and consume God, all we are. We give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. We'll come and consume God, all we are. We'll give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. Consume God, all we are. We give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. We love you. And we'll never stop. We can't live without you. Oh, Jesus. We love you. We can't get enough. Well, all this is for you, oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. We love you, and we'll never stop. We can't. give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. We come and consume God. All we are. We give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. We'll come and consume God. All we are. We give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. We'll come and consume God. All we are, we give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. We love you, and we'll never stop. We can't live without you. Oh, Jesus. We love you, we can't get enough, well, all this is for you, oh Jesus, we love you, and we'll never stop, we can't live without you, oh Jesus, we Can't get enough. Well, all this is for you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Pastor Rick, for opening the door for us to come. Thank you, guys, in Christ Chapel. You know, I remember today um, a statement that I read that Jesus' intention is to create a prophetic community or a community of prophets, not just few prophets. We heard about prophets, individual prophets in the Old Testament, just Elijah in his time, and the Lord anointed Elisha after him. But now, a community of prophets. Why? Not, be, not because writing a new Bible, no. But to reach out to the people with the love of Jesus, with the revelation of Jesus. This is our goal. Um, I'm going to start with the Great Commission and then we go to our, to our story. I, I hope we have control on time because sometimes when I'm preaching, it takes me long, but... My time. Yes. <laughs> anyway, Jesus, when, he, when the time came for him to leave this earth and to go to the Father, he has the best and important words for his disciples and for us. And this is a great commission, which is in the book of Matthew, chapter 28, starting from 18 to 20. He saw their doubts and discovered their fears because his going, they used to have him eating with them what Sometimes is in the sea, sometimes is in the desert, sometimes is at house. But now Jesus said, I am going to the Father. I will not leave you alone. But they did not experience the presence, the full presence of God by filling of his Holy Spirit yet. So some, some of them doubts. So Jesus told them, all authority has been given to me. I have all authority in heaven, on earth, everywhere. So, you have the best commission, the best, the great commission to go. Go. It's not time to, to stay again as we, as we stopped it together for three years and four months. No, it's time to go. And as you go, wherever you go, make disciples. And disciples is different than students. The students is just coming to classroom, listening, memorizing, writing the exams, and it's all. Teachers are not in our secular schools, or I hope it will not be in the Bible schools, just giving education, teaching, but making disciples is costly. Making disciples is giving the model and the example to the students, as Jesus did with his disciples. He ate with them, suffered with them, rejoiced with them, prayed with them. When, we, when they asked him to teach them to pray, it was not, not just teaching them the Lord's Prayer. No. They saw him praying for the whole night. And he is the example for them to pray. He prayed in every season of his life. In the time of temptation. In the time of choosing his disciples. In the time of facing the cross. Praying, praying, praying. So he started to pray like him. This is making disciples. Giving them the model. And this is the will of God. To confirm us into the image of his son. 
I'm not a, yeah, he give some to be prophets, amen, some to be evangelists, others to be teachers, pastors and teachers. But it's not about a job. It's a full life that's surrendering to Jesus. It's a full life. I'm not a pastor because this is my job. Yeah, okay. But because of God's call on my life to follow him. Make disciples. Teach them. Baptize them. And I am with you always. Even to the end of the age. I'm coming to you soon. How to do it? He said, we will receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you and you will be my witnesses. I will give you the power. I will give you this power. And because of that, we are here today. Because someone from America, as pastor did that when he went to the overseas and as he is doing it here as a missionary over this area, and you are a missionary at the school, you are a missionary at your work, you are a missionary to your neighborhood. A lady from Chicago, from the Stony Church, came to Egypt in 1924. Unexpectedly, she became a pioneer missionary to Egypt because she obeyed God's call. She has the success to plant more than 45 churches in south of Cairo, in Elmenia, which is like four hours south to Cairo, the capital. And this 45 churches is still working and increased to be 100, I hope, and pray that the Lord make them 1,000 one day. My dad born again in, in one of her services, and he carried the light of the gospel, the light of Pentecost to our area, to a very dark Islamic majority area in Upper Egypt. And I came to life founding that great foundation because of you. Because of someone say, yes, I am going to Egypt. I'm going to leave my family. I'm going to leave everything here. And you know, this lady has a great story. I, I think it's, um, this is our family. I will leave it for you, our family. But this lady was the great missionary that she came after Lillian Thrasher. I think many people know Lillian, but no one knows her name, his name. Her name is Mabel Dean. And we have a church in Elmenia, Egypt, under her name till today. It's called Sister Dean's Church. Because people were coming for, attracted by the Holy Spirit in the life of this lady. When everyone, she's serving the Lord the whole day, having services every, every day. But when everyone go, went home, she said, this is my time with my Lord. And she stayed praying most of the night. And when she, she the time for her come to, to, to go to home, to go home with the Lord, she said, let me stay in Egypt. She and Lillian, who are, Great missionaries. Lillian started a great orphanage in Asyut under her name till today. So, do it again for missions. If he asks you to go, please go. Don't consider troubles or COVID or anything. Go. If you are not able to go, please pray for missions. Pray for missionaries. Support missionaries. What you are paying for missions is not in vain. One soul, you know, your soul is so precious to God. Equals the death of his son, Jesus Christ, on the cross. So, you are so precious. God called me to ministry uh, after I was born again, when I was 19, in my first year of college, I went back to, from school to my church, to the small community, a church, and they were praying, and one of them was praying in tongues, as my sisters and brothers doing today. 
and she, she, he was praying in tongues. His tongues was English. And I was studying English freshman. And I love English. But the English of this man was so professional because it's coming from heaven. That's wonderful. I, I, I didn't investigate the situation because I know this man is a very uneducated man and he didn't went, go to school in his life, but his English is very perfect than my teachers and professors at college. So I went to home saying, Lord, I need the Holy Spirit. I can't do anything without him. I need him. Come and baptize me. And you know, today, we cannot live one day holy for Jesus without the Holy Spirit. We need to be filled with him every moment of our lives. We need to him to, to speak, to give us eyes, to see by the eyes of Jesus, to hear by, by his ears, to feel his feelings, to walk in his path, to do his will. He baptized me. And he filled me with fire to go and reach out to people. I finished the school, went to be a teacher for seven years for English as a second language. But every day he knocked. I can feel it to my shoulder. This is not your place. I need for you. I need you for something else. Follow me completely. No, 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 not me. Please go to this young man or to this person. I am not perfect. I can't do it. I will worship you. But please try to find someone else for full-time ministry. But it was not so. Because of his confirmation in pastors, in churches, my family. One Muslim friend came to me one day. Uh, he, is a, he was a teacher with me. And he knocked to my shoulder and said, Gamal. I said, yes, sir. He said, I see that you need to go somewhere and find another job. I said, what job? Uh, I, I see you can go to church and be a pastor. I looked to him, who told you that? He said, no one told me, but it is in my heart. You know, I cried that day. And I said, Lord, I'm not going to wait till you send a donkey to speak to me. No, I'm going to obey you. And I, I, I told my wife, she is very obedient to God's call. She said, it's between you and God. Why you come and ask me? If he wants you to go, we will go. And we did it. God blessed us to pastor our local church and different churches in Egypt. He blessed us in the Bible college, in teaching and leading. But finally, he has a new assignment in our call, to call us to the United States of America. We, do not, we did not want to come in the beginning. And we don't know why we are coming to the United States, especially for my wife, because she has no English at all when we came. Just six words, which are nothing to communicate with people. <laughs> she will tell you, how, how, what is these six words? But we said, he said to us, he took our steps Little by little, one by one. He said, he gave us an, an idea. You can go just for three months and come back for your ministry here. Okay, we, that's easy, that's good. So I called a pastor in, in, in this area, wonderful northern Missouri area. Um, he is not, he was with Assembly of God, but he started his own ministry called Heartland Ministries in Bethel, Missouri. And I said to him, his name is Charlie Sharp. He's from Kansas. He said, yes, you can come for three months or forever. Whatever you want, you can come. So we came to Heartland Ministries. 
I received my green card. My wife received her green card in one month. But the three children didn't receive anything for six months. And we prayed, and the Lord sent it later. But during that six months, we start to have peace to continue, little bit by little bit. And we stayed in Heartland. We learned a lot. It's a ministry for the addicted people, recovery program for, women, for men and women. They were like 200 hurted people living in the area. And their children are at the boarding school. So I helped teaching the Bible for juniors, Bible survey. And my wife helped to serve with the preschool kids. And she learned her English uh, at this time with these kids. So during these four years or five years, we prayed and prayed why we are here. Till he opened our eyes to St. Louis. I did not meet anybody from the area. And we, don't, we did not know why God wants us to this area. So we prayed, we obeyed. I contacted some pastors and I recognized that there are more than 10,000 Arabic speakers in the area of St. Louis. Unexpected number, 10,000. And this pastor introduced us into a lady from Jordan. She is Muslim, but became Christian. And she moved from Jordan to St. Louis because of, of, to save her life, because of danger there. And she said, come to St. Louis and help us. That's, in, that's enough, Lord. But during that, I received a call from a lady from New Orleans, Louisiana. And she said, I heard that you are going to plant a church. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, oh, come to us. We have 20 to 30 people already in the church. You can lead us and plant Hope Arabic Church here. I said, I don't know. I talked to Amal. And we said, God called us to St. Louis. But this is another opportunity. Why not? Let's try so we went for a weekend, and we have no green light from the Lord to continue there. So we came back to where God called us to be, St. Louis. We start there in July 19. Then the Lord connected us with 10 people, family from this lady from Jordan, a family, the husband from Iraq and his wife from uh, Palestine, and another family from Egypt, a young man from Egypt. In addition to our family, we are almost more than 10 people meeting every two weeks at home. And we are volunteering also with another organization called uh, Oasis International. And they connected to some families, two families from Syria, another family from Iraq and Afghani family. And we, doing our itineration, beside meeting with these people as possible. But, you know, God blessed us very much in reaching these people. And making disciples is our goal, our vision, as I said it from the beginning, to reach them out for Christ. And then to make disciples, train them, and send them to reach others. This is the multiplication that the Lord hoped for us to plant Hope Arabic Church in, in St. Louis area to serve these people. And the Holy Spirit said to me, it's not about planting Hope Arabic Church only. It will be beyond. And I trust God for the beyond because there are more than four million and a half Muslim in this nation. They are in need for Christ. So we need your prayers we start when we were 15%, but we now, by God's grace, we are almost there. We are 95%. But we still need the 5% to come in. And we pray to be in this month to start the church in full. I will give my wife um, some time to start. So 
Okay. <laughs> Um, we are family of five. We have our son here, Patrick. Say hi. <laughs> um, we have two daughters. They at home now. They uh, at the college uh, study, uh, 26 and 24, Martina and Merit. Uh, this is our picture when we have uh, our citizenship. We are American citizenship now. Great. Yeah. Um, my name is Amel. I born at a big family. I have in Egypt, I still have there five brothers and one sister. And I would like to share with you uh, my testimony, how I met Jesus, how I am here today, here. Um, because if God didn't meet me beginning of my life, I can't be here today. Yeah. Uh, I born at a big family. I have like... Uh, my mom and my dad used to go to church every day. We have a Coptic Orthodox church in our area. This is the biggest church in Egypt. If we have 100 millions in Egypt, uh, the population, uh, we have 80 of them Muslim and 20 of them Christian. 18 of them Coptic Orthodox, 2 millions of them evangelicals. And we, I was growing up at this church. I don't understand anything but the meaning of the salvation, how to born again, how to pray, I don't know. We have someone in our church mediator between us and God. When we go there, we have to pray to him. This is my family belief. All people around me believe that, to pray to someone else, and he take your prayer to Jesus. But when I used to go there, I don't feel anything, anything change in my life. Like, I still the same. I just go to church because I am so afraid of God. It's not by fear of God or I love God, just so afraid of him. Because I feel like when I go die, I will go, I will go to hell. If I didn't go to church, that's so dangerous for me. Or this is not good for me. I just need to go. But what the meaning to go? What Jesus said? Why he's, he's came? What he did for us? I don't know. I know he just came and did. That's all. I don't have Bible at home. Just our priest. Read the Bible, explain to us. We didn't have to ask any questions. When we start to ask sometime, our family, they say, oh, don't ask. Don't say anything. Just have to listen and obey. He's, he's like just God in the earth. You have to listen. That's all. But I don't understand anything. And I just say, well, how can I go pray? How can I go? To, why I go to church? Because I don't feel anything change in my life. Why I am here? They believe you born and baptized by the water, you already have the salvation, you already have the Holy Spirit. Everything you have to do, you just have to do good works with God. But I look to myself and I just say, I didn't have anything good in my life. Anyway, I would go to hell. I wish I can go die now before I grow up and my sin to be big. But I just say, okay, God, I, need, I will go far from you. I don't want to stay with you because I don't understand anything. I don't... Um, Organize what they doing. How can I spend my life with you? Recognize, yeah. But uh, one day I just say, okay, God, I will live without you. I will spend my life without you. I don't need you. But when I say that, I was so sad because I need my desire and my heart to be with him. But I don't know how. Our area was so close. Nobody can come and preach the gospel or give it us the word of God because we already have the church. We have a, they say, no, nobody can come here. But one day I went to sleep and I had a dream. I saw Jesus come to me. And he's covered all the area from my family's house. And all people in our neighborhood, our people at the church, my family, just terrible day for them. And I was with Jesus. And I saw all people run, cry, screaming, don't want to stay to see him. They think he just come for judge them or to punish them. Didn't understand he would like to show himself to them or to show, to show his love to them. They still thinking he's far from them and he, they think have to pray to someone else, not to Jesus. And I just so said because I saw my family, they had a terrible day, but I am so happy because I was with Jesus. Yeah. And I keep had that dream many times. And one time I stood and I was talked with my brother, 
He's younger than me. And he came to me and he said, I would like to tell you something. And I said, okay. He said, I had a dream last night and he had exactly my dream. Yeah. When he told me that, I just said, what? This is the dream I had last night. How did this happen? You know, God loved us. And he knows how we are thinking about him and our desire to see him. Yeah. Um, we are thirsty and hungry for him. We didn't understand how to pray, but he just came for us. Yes, yes. During that time, I just trust in God and I start to pray and ask him. After that time, I met my husband. He's from Simbas of God Church. We have an idea about the people. They're crazy people because they have a different worship. <laughs> and <laughs> well, this is our church belief. And just say, no, this is not true. This is was in the, First century. yeah, not yet. But when I went to the church with him for this time, I saw the people like today speaking uh, tongue and pray. I just say, wow, what are these people doing? I would like to run away from here. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> but I just say, I would, like to see, I would like to see what's going on here. I just wait. Uh, after the church, I started to ask my husband, and um, he explained to me some, and he uh, I read the Bible. I start to read Bible because he has a lot of Bibles at home. And I just see what Jesus done in the earth, what he, what, how he oh, discipled his disciples, Jesus. how he sent them, how he loved the people and came for them and healing them from their sickness, um, raised up from the dead. When I read that, I feel like God touched my heart. And I got saved at this time. And I just told Jesus, I need to go speak my family, everybody around with me. And I did. I just say, Jesus, we need the Muslim people too to know you. Yes. Because it's so difficult in Egypt to do that. Like we told you, no, not easy at all. You go to, to the jail or destroy your family. Or, and if one convert can't stay there. But... When I'm praying like that, God gave it me vision we are here and preach by English. My husband, me, but I don't know English. <laughs> and I told God, how can I do that? I don't have English. But Jesus told me this is not yet, this is later. But after 19 years, we decided to come here. And I don't want to come. I don't have language. I don't have culture. I don't understand anything. We have a church there already. We have family. Everything was good. How we can go start from beginning another mission or another ministry. But when we this uh, decided to come and we prayed um we came we didn't know where we go but we come and wait for the ministry god would like us to go like four years and a half and already went to st louis we found they like are more than ten thousand people need christ and they have a lot of mosques they, they have three mosques there they have a 20 islamic center if you can go forward you can see yeah not here yeah. One of this in uh, two, Highway 270, that's the biggest one. You, maybe when you drive, you can see they have Islamic uh, centers there, 20, 22 or 23. 23. And they are a lot. We meet them everywhere. But we need, just need your prayer for these people because we need God to go before us yes. to speak them. Need God reveal himself to them in their dream Please. because it's, we have many Muslim people God made them by dreams like that because he needed them and he loved them. As he loved us, he loved them too. When he loved us, we have to love one another. Because I hear in some time, American people afraid or scared to uh, speak with these people sometime, if you see them anywhere. But if the Holy Spirit told you to speak to them, you have to speak. And you have American people lost here too. When you see the people around you, you just Indeed. speak about Jesus. Give them the good news of God because God loves all people. He came for all people, for everyone, yes. Yes. for all nations. And he loves us. I don't want to take more time, but maybe my husband, <laughs> he usually pray in Arabic before we die. <laughs> he maybe he can go pray. Yeah, would you please, uh, we would love to pray in the Arabic language for you guys. For a moment, just one minute. Would you stand with me and pray? Uh, hallelujah. He's the God of all nations. He is the God who loves every one of us. Rabbana Yesua al Messiah al Azim al Quddus. Kam tu barikak wa tu azimak nufusana ayuha al Rabbi Sayyidna. Nashkuruk la anaka ahbabti al Jamia. 
وتريد الجميع أن يخلصون وإلى معرفة الحق يقبلون أصلي في هذا الصباح يا رب لأجل هذه الكنيسة كريست تشابل يا رب أصلي لأجل أسيس ريك يا رب أصلي لأجل كانسس سيتي يا رب أصلي لأجل أمريكا لأجل سانت لويس لأجل المسلمين والأمريكان لأجل الكل يا رب تعالى بنهضة ارسل روحك القدير يشفي اطرد كل مرض من وسط شعبك اطرد الكوفيد 19 يا رب اطرد كل مرض يا رب بيعتري شعبك في هذه الأيام وانشر نور إنجيلك انت قلت اذهبوا إلى العالم أجمع ونحن بكلمتك هنا يا رب افتح الأبواب كمل ما بقى من خدمتنا ودينا نجاح في كل خطوة في اسم الرب يسوع المسيح أصلي In Jesus' mighty name I pray Amen